it's that time of the day. We are here at the well and it's time for our prayer, our prayer gathering that is virtual. And I love when I see people from all over the world, eh? whether it be Africa or eh? England or the Caribbean or here in America, it's just wonderful that we can gather like this. So I am welcoming each of you here today. God bless you, Sister Helen. Good to see you on with us today. Hallelujah. Good to see you, my friend. Yay. <laughs> All right. So let's pray. Father, we, we are grateful. We are grateful for today. We are grateful for this opportunity we have to gather virtually and to, to know that we have the assurance that when we pray, you are listening. And if you're listening, God, you are answering as well. And we come boldly. We come confidently knowing that we have this wonderful privilege to approach your throne. So I just pray today that as we would gather from across the world, Lord God, in this space, in this place, Lord, that you would hear us and that, Father, you would attend to the cries of our hearts. We are so grateful. And I am so grateful for each of you. God bless you. Um, Aileen, God, to see good, Aileen, good to see you here. I'm saying Aileen because it's, it's spelled that way, but I know it's Aileen like I am. Okay, good to have you on. Um, good to see you, my brother. Whoa, yay. Ephesians 6 and 18 uh, is, is a verse I want us to contemplate on today. And, and in Ephesians 6, we know that Paul instructs the believers to put on the entire armor of God. And often we talk about the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And we, we, we have the belt of truth around our loins, right? And we should. But actually, if we exclude prayer <laughs> as a critical piece of the garment, we are going to be in trouble. So the message puts it this way. And you know the message amplifies everything here. Be prepared. You're up against more than you can handle on your own. Take all the help you can get. Every weapon God has issued so that when it's all over, but the shouting, you'll be on your feet. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation are more than words. Learn how to apply them. You'll need help throughout your life. God's word is an indispensable weapon. In the same way, prayer is essential in this ongoing warfare. Pray hard and long. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Keep your eyes open. Keep each other's spirits up so that no one falls behind or drops out. This is why I do what I do, man. Because I believe there is dynamic power released when we pray. And, and you know, our prayers are going to be different at different times in different seasons. But we should pray all kinds of prayers. I was up early this morning with my prayer partner. She called me at about 5 uh, about six. <laughs> yeah, believe it or not. I was up at six and we prayed together. But she shared something the Lord had been, you know, stirring in her spirit from the year began. And once that prophetic word was released, we both were able to pray with a prophetic unction. And, and the, the, the insight and the revelation that came was so powerful. And I'm like, God, I wish I could pray like this all the time. But the truth be told, there are different kinds of prayer. Yes, Ephesians chapter 6. Yes, please put Ephesians 6. And I'm looking at verse 18. Thank you, Andrea. Prayer should be our ongoing um, weapon that's used, ongoing instrument of, of, of clearing the atmosphere, clearing the path so we can forge ahead. I think oftentimes we minimize that we live in two worlds. The natural world, the spiritual world. <laughs> oh gosh, Marilyn is saying it's cold in New York. Sorry, my love. I'm a little chilly myself here, but hey, I know it, it's, it's many times worse in New York. So bundle up, my friend, bundle up. Prayer is essential. Pray hard and long. And, and I don't know about you, but I, I realize that my prayer isn't always as sharp as it should be, isn't always as passionate, always as powerful as it should be. But this is what I trust that every kind of prayer is heard by God. 
every kind of prayer is important to echo every kind of prayer because we are in different seasons at different times in our lives. And the truth is sometimes all you can release is a groan. Mm, I know those prayers or sometimes just the tears. God hears that. Or sometimes it's silence. God hears that. Listen to um, a different version. Embrace the power of God's, the power of salvation's full deliverance, like a helmet to protect your thoughts from lies. And take the mighty razor sharp spirit sword of the spoken word of God. I love that. This must be the passion. <laughs> I forgot to actually indicate on my notes. Pray passionately in the spirit as you constantly intercede with every form of prayer at all times. I want to emphasize every form of prayer, every kind of prayer. Pray the blessings of God upon all his believers. Goodness. Listen, I believe when I stand as an intercessor on behalf of another, that God who hears me praying for you, praying for somebody else, that he's also noting the, the desires of my heart and the, the longings of my heart. And, and I don't even have to pray. He's responding because I am putting myself in the place of another. The Bible says of Job, when he prayed for his friends, that God turned the captivity of Job. God turned around his situation. So we pray and we intercede on behalf of others because there's a blessing when we do so. Pray all kinds of prayer. First, let me tell you, there's a prayer of declaration, a bold prophetic declaration. We already know what the will of God is. We already know what his word says. We already know what is happening in heaven. And we want to execute the will of heaven in the earth. We want to enforce the will of God in the earth. And so those are declaration. Those are decrees according to Job 22 and 28. Go ahead, please put that, Job 22 and 28. Let us decree a thing and we shall see it established. You know, the message says you shall desire something and it you shall speak something and it shall come to pass. Whoa, that is if we are aligned with God. That is if our hearts are aligned with the will of God. That is if we are surrendered to the purposes of God. And so today I want to decree that the will of God on in heaven is going to be in operation in the earth. What is the will of God? That you and I are in soundness of mind. Hallelujah. Yes, I wish above all things that you be in health, even as your soul prospers. I decree soundness of mind. I decree divine health. I decree divine wholeness. Come on, decree some things right where you are right now. You know, hopefully you're in a place where you can speak out loud, but your, your words a powerful life and death are in the power of the tongue. What we speak will be creative and bring forth what we are desiring. I truly believe we underestimate the power of a spoken word. As a matter of fact, I was talking to someone just recently and something they said, I said, no, 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 please take, let's cancel out that word. I don't like the sound of it because words are powerful and, and they were kind of refuting them like, that's how I feel. No, I know. But you got to understand once it's released in the atmosphere, it's going to have power to begin to create what you have spoken. So if that is true and we believe it's true, then speak the will of God right now where you are. Lift your voice, be bold, be passionate and declare and decree the will of God in your life the order of the kingdom, the structure of the kingdom, the will of heaven, the purpose of God. When you already know through his scripture, through his word, through revelation, what is the will of God, you speak that boldly and you speak that confidently. We should also pray standing Psalm 134 and one, you know, all the servants of the Lord would stand by night in the house of the Lord, in the temple of the Lord, day and night prayer stand. You know, I mean, I think I grew up initially thinking the only posture you could have in prayer is one of kneeling. The truth, the confession is I seldom kneel now, but, but kneeling is, 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 it is part of prayer, right? We should kneel before God. We should kneel in prayer. That is scriptural as well. That is scriptural posture that we kneel in prayer. But I truly believe we should stand at times in the presence of the Lord with our hands up raised to him, appealing 
appealing to heaven to move and operate on our behalf. I've recently, through a friend, um, begin to look at the courtroom scene of heaven. Do you know that many times we see uh, God's operation in heaven only in one dimension, but many scriptural, scriptural, scriptural references tell us that actually God sits in heaven as a judge, that the enemy of our souls go to him as the accuser. And so if there's an accuser and if there's a judge, that is a court scene. So there are times when you and I must go to God saying, Lord, we are appealing to the courts of heaven to render a verdict in in, in our behalf, yeah, to render a favorable verdict, I want to say, on our behalf. So pray kneeling, pray standing, pray with your hands up raised. Oh, pray with your, 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 your face on the ground. Pray falling prostrate before the Lord. Pray walking, you know. You, I love to pray walk. I love to walk up and down my block and pray. These people don't know, but I'm praying over. I look at the, the address on the mailbox, and I'm praying for every inhabitant person dwelling in that house walk up and down in your street or on your on your in your office you know they, they don't have to know you're doing it don't don't do it in a way be on the cover man and pray in that office pray pray against the darkness that's operating in many lives and many hearts pray pray in your home pray on your you know on on in your in your village in your borough in your neighborhood just pray pray walk. Yeah, we do that all the time. And sometimes, you know, for me, it's a lot easier, especially if I'm going to wake up early in the morning. I tell you the truth. I cannot go kneeling down. I will fall asleep. So walking is important. Walking up and down. Pray silently. Now this one is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Cause God read the contents of my heart. God bless you from Germany. I love it. Hallelujah. God listens to the content of our hearts. So Psalm 37 and 7, I like the Passion Version. It says, quiet your heart in his presence and pray. Quiet your heart. Listen, Psalm, 1, Psalm 46 and, and, and 1 says, be still, and 10 rather, be still and know that I am God. There's a place for stillness. I got to tell you, I am animated and I'm full of life, but there are times when I know all I need to do is be still, to be quiet my heart, to quiet my soul so I can hear. The truth is I don't often hear if I'm flustered and perturbed and all anxious. Tell your heart, be still. Tell your heart, be quiet in his presence at times so you can hear his voice, so you can discern his will. And, and I want to tell you, there are times when I also journal my, my, my prayer. So I'm, I'm praying to the Lord, but what I'm doing, actually I'm writing and I write what I am saying and that's me. And then I write what I hear God say in response. And I've got to trust and you must trust as well that the Holy Spirit is at work in your life and in my life. He's, he's, he's hearing our every thought. He's discerning our every thought. And so you trust that God is speaking to you because he's a speaking God. So when you pray, there is a place to be quiet, be still, say nothing, and wait and hear what he says in response. And trust that what you hear in response is what he wants you to hear. Of course, of course, he will confirm his word, <laughs> and we trust that we will wait for the confirmation, and he will do so in many forms, in many ways, to say, this is my will for your life. Pray all kinds of prayers. And their prayers of supplication. Their prayers of pleading the will of God. Their prayers of petitioning the will of God. Like I said, the courtroom. When you bring, think about a petition, that's a courtroom term. That's courtroom language. So their prayers of petition. Their prayers of groaning. Their prayers of quietness. Their prayers of stillness. Their prayers, their prayers where we're just listening and discerning what is the will of God. There are prophetic prayers. There are prayers of declarations. There are prayers of decrees. And so, I don't know about you, but we should pray all kinds of prayers according to Ephesians chapter 6 and 18. Not just one kind of prayer, but all kinds. Why? Because God hears all kinds of prayer. I want us to spend some time in prayer today. 
Hallelujah. So if you would like to insert something there in the, in the comment box of, in terms of what you, what's on your heart, what is it you'd like for us to pray about? What is it you want to declare and decree? What is it you want to petition heaven about? What is the supplication you want to bring before the Lord? What is the groaning? What is, the, what is that request? You know, God knows, but yet he says, bring, make your request known to God. <laughs> it's amazing. He wants us to converse with him. He wants us to dialogue with him. And so even though he can read the desires of our hearts, he can discern our thoughts afar off, he still says, come, come boldly to the throne of grace. You are my child. You've been bought with the precious blood of my son. And I want to uh, respond to the cries of your heart. So anyone. What is it that you are desiring before the Lord today? What shall we pray about? What do you want to bring before the Lord? And I want to agree. For the Bible says in, in, in Matthew chapter 18, that if two of us shall agree on earth as touching anything, it shall be done. Listen, the will of God we already know. He wants you well. He wants you whole. He wants you prosperous. He wants, he wants his well-being and his wholeness pressed into you. I love to pray um, Numbers 6, 24 to 26 over people. It is, it is a lovely blessing to pronounce. And it says, the Lord bless you. When you think about the blessing of the Lord, we're thinking about everything, all things that are good, all things that are good. We speak the goodness of God over our lives. All right, somebody's asking for uh, prayer so you can hear the voice of God more, so you can be focused in the times of tribulation. Lord, we just bring your daughter before you right now. We agree that, Lord, her ability to hear your voice will increase. Her ability to discern your will will become more accurate, Father. I pray for the quietness and the stillness that she needs in the times of trouble, in the times of adversity, that, Father, your word would be highlighted above everything else, that your voice would be heard above every other voice, God. I thank you and I praise you for victory for our sister today. I pray for this one who's saying, Lord, I need your prayer I need your intervention in my family. Lord, we agree with our sister today on behalf of her, her family. You know the need. You know the concern. You know the burden of her heart, God. And you said to cast all our cares upon the Lord for you care. You care for us. We refuse to carry the stuff. We refuse. Lord, we throw it on you. We throw it on you in Jesus' name. I pray for this one who's asking for clear direction for some specific things. Lord, we ask that you would shed light on the pathway, that you would make known your will. We pray as uh, Proverbs 3, 4, and 4, 5, and 6, that you would trust in the Lord, my sister, with all your heart, and that you would lean not on your understanding, but on his. You will know the way to take. He will speak to you his will. I pray for this sister today who is saying, I want to be drawn closer to the Lord. Wow. We pray against just that sense of uh, uh, anxiety even now. We pray the peace and the shalom of God over your mind, over your heart. We pray the rest of God. Yes, receive it, my sister. Receive the rest of God. Receive Isaiah 26 and 3. Isaiah 26, I speak it over you, that he will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your heart and your mind stayed on him. I pray for the ability to... Keep your gaze on the Lord, not on the, the storm. When, when Peter took his eyes off of Jesus, he began to sink. When we take our eyes off of the Lord, we will begin to sink under the weight of life and all that life throws at us. But I declare by the power of God that you and I will have the focus we need to keep our gaze on the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you that you're hearing our prayers. Any more prayer requests? Thank you that you're answering us even now. Thank you that you're responding to the cries of our hearts even now. Thank you, Lord God. We bless you, Father. I bless you, Elaine. I bless you. I thank God for ministering to you right now. I thank you for, minister for him ministering to your family. I thank you for the intervention that you need. I thank you for the miracle that you need. I stand in the gap on your behalf, and I appeal to heaven to respond to earth, and we declare the will of God comes to you now. The purpose of God manifests in your life. I believe that many of us are having hindrances in our lives. 
I believe that many of us are having demonic barricades even blocking our our advancement, but I declare even now that every demonic barricade be removed, that every demonic peg that is hindering our movements be uprooted right now in the name of Jesus. I declare strength over you, my sister. I declare the perfect will of God over your life right now. I declare that you will know what to do, when and how, that God is going to bring to you all the resources you need so you can fulfill his will in the earth. Hallelujah. We are not orphans, man. Come on. We are not bastards. We have a good, good father. And if earthly fathers know how to love on their children, if earthly fathers know how to care for their children, guess what? We have a heavenly father who wants to give to us the kingdom, who wants to give to us all of the fullness of the kingdom of God. Father, we thank you today that in your kingdom, there is no lack. So think about it today, wherever there's a lack in your life, and I can think of many in mine, wherever there's a lack and a deficiency in your life, it's not reflective of the kingdom of God. And so even now, Lord, I declare the kingdom of God come. I declare the will of God on the earth right now. I declare order to our lives, yes, order in our finances, order in our marriages, order in our relationships, order in our career, order in our business, order with our children and our parenting, order God in our family structure, the will of God in the earth, in our communities, Father, in our neighborhoods, Father, in our schools, in the educational system, in the media, in government. Lord, we say thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Hallelujah. Thank you, Papa God. Thank you that you care for us. Thank you that you love us. Thank you that you're a good, good father, and we are not left in the earth on our own, that you are mindful of every need before we can even ask, every concern before we can even echo a word. Hallelujah. So brethren, I feel like I'm in church. <laughs> My friends, <laughs> pray all kinds of prayer. Pray supplication prayers. Pray petition prayers. Pray prophetic prayers. Pray groanings, pray quietly, pray singing. And how about just pray praising? There are times when we should ask for nothing but to begin to say, Lord, I thank you that I know you already heard me and the answer is on the way. So I thank you in advance for the loan. I thank you in advance for the job. I thank you in advance for God, the divine connections I need so I can move forward in purpose and destiny. I thank you in advance, oh God, for the miracles that are needed. Lord, somebody needs healing in their body today. Somebody is having issue in your physical being right now as we speak. You know who you are. Lay hands on the area of your body that is literally on fire as it were. It's aching. And I declare by the stripes of Jesus, you are made whole. Mm, hallelujah. He was wounded for your transgression, bruised for your iniquities and by his stripes, you are healed. I declare the power of God moving through your body right now. Every organ, every tissue, every gland, every cell, every membrane, I command you to respond to the word of the Lord right now. I say to that body to respond to the resurrected power of Christ. The word of God says, if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, it shall quicken your mortal body. I, I command your body to respond to the life of Christ right now, to the resurrected power of Jesus. Be made whole. Sickness is illegal. Did you know that? Sickness in the body of the believer is illegal. It doesn't belong. Anything contrary to the kingdom anything contrary to the word, anything contrary to God's truth and God's light, we must evict, evict darkness, ev evict depression and, and anxiety, e evict fear, evict wrong th thought life or negative thinking, evict the oppression that you feel from time to time. And I, I want to speak to somebody right now. Somebody, the, the oppression has been very strong, especially as far as your home life is concerned. You, you are, you're unable to function 
as you should. You're able to, to flow as you should. You're able, unable to relate as you should. There seems to be a shroud around you, just a shroud of darkness around you. I declare even now, light will break through even today in the name of Jesus. I say to you, speak the word of God over the atmosphere in your house. I say to you, get the word, get Psalm 91 and declare he who dwells in the secret place of the most high. Speak the word of God, speak life. I know sometimes we speak what we see, but God is saying to you that is seeing the oppression in your house. Don't speak to what you see, speak to what you want to see. Speak to the the truth of God, speak to the word of God, speak to the life of the spirit of God. So speak to the atmosphere. Father, we command the atmosphere to respond to your word right now. The truth of your word right now. And we declare even the atmosphere, even the very ear space around us will become filled up with the life and the presence of the living God. Hallelujah. Darkness must go when light appears. Did you hear that? Darkness must go when light appears. We are carriers of light. We are light bearers. And so when I show up, when you show up, we are saying to darkness, now I'm here. Christ has just shown up inside of me and you must go. Hallelujah. Everything contrary to God and his kingdom must bow in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and we praise you for this word today. We honor you, God that you have heard our cries, that the petitions that we have brought up to the courtrooms of heaven have been heard by the righteous judge, and Lord, you have rendered, hallelujah, verdicts in our favor. Somebody take your verdict right now and walk out of that court and say, hallelujah, I have a yes from the Lord. I have an amen from heaven. I have the blessings of God released over my life. I don't know about you, but this word is speaking to my heart. And if it's speaking to your heart, I encourage you, please like the video, share the video, and let somebody else be encouraged by this word. God is hearing our prayer, has heard our prayer, all kinds of prayer, let us continue. Let us not get weary. Let us not say, it doesn't make sense. God is not hearing me. I don't know if it, I should keep praying. Keep praying. Because one day, one day, you know, you know, sometimes we, let me say this as I close. Sometimes we don't even realize that God is not just wanting to answer our prayer like, you know, he's some genie and just issuing our wishes. He wants to grow our character. He wants to grow us in to him into his likeness and into his qualities right and so there are times when what looks like a delay is really a formation of christ in us <laughs> what looks like a denial is really christ forming of himself in us so let the work of grace happen man let all that god wants to do in you and through you continue and i believe that as you stay faithful and as I stay faithful, God will show up in ways that will confound us. Expect the incredulous this year. I believe it. Expect the miraculous this year. Expect the supernatural intervention of God this year. Expect suddenly. I have a dear uh, brother. Yes, my brother in, in the flesh. we here with me as I speak. And do you know? I've been saying to him for the longest, he needs to visit me in Florida and visit us because I'm not the only one here. And he finally came. But guess what? Because he's a builder, <laughs> I am receiving a blessing of his presence right now because there have been things I needed to get done around the house. And his presence has been an answer to my prayer. And I'm thinking, God, the same way my brother came and I didn't even know he was coming, it was kind of like a surprise in some ways, two weeks notice. I am saying, God, I take that as a sign as to how you're going to show up this year. Would you believe that for yourself? That God will show up in some suddenly ways, surprising ways, and things that you have been desiring and praying for for a long time, you will see the answers come. God bless you. I close speaking the priestly blessing over us. 
I close speaking the ironic blessing from Numbers 6, 24 to 26 over all of us. Would you lift your hands if you can and receive this. The Lord bless you and keep you. <laughs> the Lord makes his face ah, to, to shine upon you. That's his favor. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Ah, shalom. Shalom means nothing missing, nothing broken. Shalom. Shalom. Somebody go ahead and put shalom, exclamation, exclamation. Shalom over you. Shalom over your business. Shalom over your marriage, over every relationship. Shalom over your dreams. Shalom over your desires. Shalom over your mind, over your heart. Shalom over your body. Shalom over your home, over your finances. Shalom over your everything that concerns you, over your ministry. Shalom. Nothing missing and nothing broken. God bless you, friends. Please share the video and let someone else be blessed. See you on Monday for Monday Morning Manor. Next Wednesday for prayer at the well. Thanks for joining me. It was a joy to see so many of you here today.